Hi, my name's Hannah Durkin, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Nottingham. I'm here to talk about Nottingham Contemporary's fantastic exhibition on Haitian art, the biggest of its kind ever held in the UK. The exhibition's called Kathu, which means crossroads in Haitian voodoo, and represents the point at which the human and spirit worlds meet. Now, when we talk about voodoo, we too often wrongly think of a world of superstition, black magic, and the undead. But voodoo is in fact an extremely sophisticated and dynamic religion, a complex blend of a range of beliefs, including Catholicism, many, many African religions, Islam, and probably pre-Columbian beliefs too, that emerged initially as a spiritual and psychological response to slavery in the New World. Now what this exhibition so wonderfully shows is the importance of voodoo and Haitian art and Haitian history. Much of my work is on dance, in particular cinematic representations of black dancers, both in commercial cinema and in ethnographic films made in places such as Haiti. Now, there are 200 works to look at in this exhibition, but I want to focus on just one. Maya Deren's film, Divine Horseman, The Living Darren was a pioneer of 16mm film. She played with space and editing to create films that were alive with movement, what we might term dancing films. Darren's dancing camera sought to convey visually heightened psychological states, and she was fascinated with rituals, which led her to Haiti to record voodoo. Darren initially wanted to create a film comparing voodoo with Balinese rituals and New York children's games, but she quickly realised that this would be reductive and insulting to voodoo. She was also struck by the tremendous poverty in Haiti, which made her work seem insensitive and self-indulgent. So in many ways, Darren's film project was not a success. Divine Horseman was never edited and released in Darren's lifetime. Darren realised that voodoo was just too complex to recreate on screen. In fact, she was so taken with the religion that she became an initiate herself. But if we can't get a full picture of voodoo from the film, Darren still shows how art can make possible a creative interaction with and heightened understandings of this complex religion. Divine Horseman captures a world far removed from zombies and voodoo dolls. It also goes against traditional methods of recording human societies which discouraged intimate contact between the researcher and the community under research. As fellow anthropologist Margaret Mead put it rather disparagingly, Darren was right in there with the goat. Voodoo is a very physical religion. Practitioners use dance to enter into trance-like states that they believe allow them to communicate with their divinities. And Darren uses slow motion to emphasise the ritual intensity of the dancer's movements. Instead of standing back and recording voodooists as scientific specimens, Darren joins them in a visual dialogue. This sets her work apart from many historical representations of voodoo by non-Haitians. There's no sense of her trying to impose, impose a fixed or authoritative interpretation of voodoo. She's simply responding to the movements of those around her. Divine Horseman therefore shows how Darren immersed herself in and became a participant in voodoo, and her inventive recording techniques helped to draw out interior significances too long obscured by media distortions of the religion. Darren may not have been happy with her film, but what her receptive camera shows, and what so many of the artworks in this exhibition so brilliantly convey, is the ways in which creative expression can open our eyes to the richness of voodoo and challenge our preconceptions about this much misunderstood religion. <laughs>